And so long. let's see what Idaho can do now coming off this timeout. There's a deflection. Nice defense, forced him right down to the baseline to the double team. Argo knifing through the middle. And two more, 10 zip Gonzaga. I like that play by Jeremy Pargo. He didn't get out of control. He was in control the whole way down with the basketball. Saw a little seam in the defense and went for it. And then you know as well as I do what he does in there. And the steal by Micah Downs. Can he finish? Bang! Steal. I guess he can. Can he finish? Did you see that? Oh! -ho! And now the pressure. You can hear the crowd. And we've got a foul away from the basketball. Well, I will say this. John Verlin was a, a assistant coach for Stu Merle, who, by the way, was a 1974 graduate of Gonzaga University, 11 at Utah State, and uh, four at Northern Colorado. And the whole story on those two guys or that whole system is discipline. And uh, so far, Idaho has been a little bit rattled and taken out of that discipline attack on the offensive end caused by defense on the Zags part. That foul called on uh, Trevor Morris, his first team second. Ball out of bounds. It goes to Idaho. Well, if Austin Day needs to work on something in his game, <laughs> it might be the high-low pass. That's a signature move, bread and butter for the Zags. And Josh Heifeld had his man locked and sealed in the lane. Austin Day's got to find a way to get that ball to him. And the foul call there on Matt Bolden. And it's obvious uh, in the first three games for Idaho what they really need to work on this year. Gonzaga's off to a perfect start shooting the ball. They're five of five in their loss to Michigan State. The Spartans shot nearly 60 percent and they hit 11 three pointers in that game. So Idaho's got to play better defense. They're a really small team. There's no really big center or big forward out there. A lot of uh, guard sized guys. So it's going to be tough on them to challenge you know jump shooters unless they're right up in their grill. Hobson drives. And the travel call. I thought it was going to be a charge. But Mike Peterson, the head official, says, nope, too many steps, turnover. And that's four straight turnovers now for Idaho. As Matt Bolden goes out, Stephen Gray checks in. Well, when they look up, uh, that'd be the Vandals look up at the scoreboard and see themselves 12 0. They start forcing things a little bit. And you know, you got to credit defense uh, on the Zags part also for causing those turnovers. I've seen a lot of good pressure and a lot of good help. Downs missed the shot. Gonzaga's first miss of the game. He was looking for a foul. Here's Wiley with it. Hand off to Brandon Brown of the 22 out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, the senior. And our first timeout, 15.46 to play first half. Gonzaga off to a 12 zip start. Here's the senior point guard, Jeremy Pargo going to work. An easy bucket inside. And then the defense, Micah Downs and the big finish. 12 zip Gonzaga. Well, Gonzaga's hit five of their first six shots. The Vandals of Idaho yet to hit one. They're 0 for 3, four turnovers. Needless to say, not a good start for Idaho. <laughs> No, but like we said in, in the uh, eggs keys there was, you know, solid defense and defense will lead to offense. And if you look four points off of the Idaho turnovers caused by the defense, four points fast break points. So that means the defense was good on the other end. So eight of the uh, Gonzaga's 12 points have come from what their defense has caught. Here's Brown. And we've got a whistle. Offensive foul against Idaho. Big Marvin Jefferson trying to get a screen on the baseline, trying to get a shooter open down there. Micah Day did, or Micah Downs did a nice job where he just kind of made himself skinny, chased the man out, and when he chased the man out, Marvin had to step in, and that's an illegal pick. Jefferson's first, team's third, five turnovers now for the Idaho Vandals. They trail number nine, Gonzaga, 12 zip. And here's Heitfeld with it on the post. Square shoots, good. Take what's given. Jefferson didn't step out with Josh on the uh, turnaround look up at the basket, and 
Josh made him pay with a nice jumper. Do you ha really have to be careful, though, of a 6'11 guy driving by you? You have to pop out on him, right? I would step right. When Josh stepped out and faced up, I would have stepped right. You with have him. to. You have to because he's a shooter. He's not a six-foot guard that's going to go around you. Right. And a blocking foul inside on Stephen Gray. His first, team's first. Actually, Gonzaga's second now. Gonzaga now six of seven shooting. It's got to be tough for a team like Idaho who just got home. Actually, haven't they haven't been home yet? No. Yeah. They came back from playing this game against Michigan State, number six in the nation, and then they come right back and they got to play number nine on the road. <laughs> so number six and number nine on the road in a matter of a few days. Hargo drive, pick out Gray, three ball, no good. See, that's not a bad shot out of transition, though. Good penetration by Pargo and then a kick out to Gray. Jefferson traveled. And how about the transition back into defense after the mess shot? Pargo penetrated, and who was the first guy back? Jeremy Pargo. That's excellent. If your leader's doing that, then the rest of the guys will follow. And didn't pick up a silly foul. Did you see him not reach in? He knew Marvin was going to have a little trouble down there <laughs> with the dance. Step back. And Jeremy in the past would have reached in and tried to slap and steal the ball away, but that time was very smart not reaching in. Down. The three ball from the corner. On Saturday night, Gonzaga took 16 threes in that first half. They made just four. They're three of four in this game. Yeah, 29% on one game, and that's not uh, typical for Gonzaga. They usually get better looks. I just think they rushed a lot of their shots. They were so anxious to play that first game. Brown trying to work on Micah Downs, threw it to Jefferson. He backs inside, little sky hook, no good. Rebound Ira Brown, number 50 in there. Pargo with it near side. Austin Day, another three. Oh, <laughs> Ira Brown as Jefferson mistimed his leap. And the foul call on number 32, Kashif Watson. Micah Downs, perfect from behind the arc, two of two, great form. He, he drifted right down to the corner on Jeremy's couple of penetration dribbles. Got himself squared to the rim. Everybody will say 10 toes to the rim or your shoulder square to the rim. You usually got a good chance of making it. Micah had both his feet set to the uh, to the rim and also his shoulders. And he's he's as talented as anybody out there on the floor. And he's got to realize that. His feet are set prior to catching the pass. Exactly. In anticipation. And Pargo delivered it right in the shooting pocket where Micah had his hands ready to shoot the basketball. And when you get all that going for you, it's usually a good result. Austin Day driving with the left hand. Went right at Luciano de Sousa that time, number 13. Jefferson inside, foul called on Stephen Gray. Gray picks up number two, that's three on Gonzaga. And not a bad foul by Stephen Gray. When the big man Marvin Jefferson's that deep in the paint, Stephen you don't want to give up easy baskets. You got to make him pay him. Stephen did a nice job of uh, going for the ball. So Idaho still Marvin looking for Jefferson. their first points. And, Question is, will he get him at the free throw line? Well, Jefferson is uh, not a bad free throw shooter. He's only 33%. <laughs> Doesn't show it there, though. Yeah, good looking nice shot. Arc. Yeah. The junior out of Merced, California. Gray goes out of the game with those two fouls. Micah Downs checking right back in. And also, Dimitri Goodson, number three on the floor for Gonzaga. Jefferson 1 2. Goodson, a freshman out of Spring, Texas. And a good one. 17 to 1. Brown inside. Austin Day. I think Austin was expecting Ira to shoot it. They give it to Idaho.